Welcome to Business Conversations with your host, business strategist, Clive Enova. Clive is joined by expert guests as they talk business behind the scenes to give you the tools and insights to support your growth, security and serenity as you strive for your success. Welcome to another episode of Business Conversations with Clive Enova. I am Clive Enova, business strategist, and we're having a conversation with David Pagotto about marketing your business, the power of SEO, Google Ads, and paid social. David is passionate about seeing organisations grow while working on his mission to support meaningful causes. Hello, David, and welcome. Clive, thank you so much for having me on. Absolute pleasure. Now, I'm really taken by these meaningful causes. What have you got yourself involved in? So as a digital marketing agency, we firstly support quite a few organizations on a gratis basis. One of those organizations that we get heavily involved in is called Edgar's Mission. It might be an organization that you're familiar with, but they're basically an animal shelter that looks after animals and things like that. They're based in Lansfield. They've been around for quite some time and they do terrific work, absolutely fantastic work in the space. So not only do we have a relationship with them where we do some of their work free of charge, We also sponsor an animal for every full-time employee we have in the business. And, you know, I think it's a very important aspect to, you know, the question of why does anyone start a business to begin with if there isn't a component of giving back as well. So it's something that I firmly believe in and I think it's very supportive all around. And good on you for that. And that probably answers the question of why the kangaroos and koalas were outside your place clapping as I went. (laughs) They were thinking everybody going in was going to be one of your employees. Ah, here's another one of us. (laughs) (laughs) But what about this power of SEO, Google Ads and paid social? Now, a lot of people hear about these terms and phrases. Yeah. What on earth does it all mean? Well, each one of those things represents a different marketing channel for a small business or a large business to look at and consider. So SEO means search engine optimization. And the goal of that is to rank organically in Google search results. So if a customer brings up a Google page, types in a particular phrase, ideally, if that phrase relates to the service or product that you're selling, you're showing up organically free of charge based on that search result. Now, obviously, there's a fair amount of background work that goes into making that happen. And that's ultimately uh, the art of search engine optimization in itself. Google Ads enables you to ultimately pay for that position. So They've actually been making a lot of changes recently in terms of how the search results look. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but they're constantly doing bits and pieces like that. They always try to make the ads look a little bit less like ads. It's just kind of the always seems to be the trend. But ultimately, through Google Ads, you can pay for those positions as well. Whereas search engine optimization is something that takes a bit of time to kick in for a business, particularly a new business. Google Ads is something that you can essentially pay for and receive results very, very quickly. But you pay on a per-click basis generally. So, you know, the cost for that can add up. Social media marketing, on the other hand, is, you know, what everyone knows in terms of Facebook, in terms of Instagram, perhaps LinkedIn on the B2B side, and the advertising options that can be done there as well. So ultimately, it represents, you know, a good chunk of, you know, the online advertising that can happen through those three channels. Obviously, marketing needs to be viewed as a bit more of a pie. There's lots of other things that can be done, including things like email and the more traditional marketing bits and pieces. But those three are good. There's some good areas for most small businesses to look at in those three. Indeed. As you ran through it and made it sound really, really simple, (laughs) (laughs) there is a lot goes on in the background of all of those. You mentioned pay-per-click in Google Ads. There are quite possibly a number of our listeners who are not familiar with what does pay-per-click mean? So basically, you know, when you use Google Ads as a business, and you go ahead and you set up your ads or you engage an agency to do it on your behalf, you're ultimately paying every time someone clicks on your ad, which is a far better model than, say, paper impression. You know, like the traditional methods of advertising, you look at like billboards, TV, radio, you know, you're not paying for a result. You're paying for exposure. You're paying for so many ears and eyes potentially, you know, listening or looking at that advertisement as opposed to, you know, when you're talking about putting an advertisement up through Google Ads, through the search channel of that, for example, usually someone has a particular search term that has intention attached to it. For example, if someone types in 
buy a black dress, they're interested in buying a black dress. There's absolutely no doubts about the fact that that's what they're looking for. And if you have a Google ad that comes up offering that particular product, someone might click on that. They already have a high level of interest at that moment and are likely to make a purchase. Now, you know, that applies in the e-commerce sense in terms of, you know, any products you could imagine, including the fashion industry, but also when it comes to lead generation on a, a bit more of a service basis too. So the pay-per-click is if I didn't click on it, there's no pay. But Correct. because I click on means indicating that I'm seriously interested and that's the one I pay for. That's right. And that's, you know, you'd write your advertisement in a way where, you know, you're ultimately... You know, not only are you using the what the user types in to display your ad, so in Google Ads, in the search section of it, you, know, you essentially kind of add the keywords that you want to show up for. And there's a few different technical aspects to that, but essentially, you know, you're adding keywords in, people are typing those keywords, you're showing up. You also get to control the message that shows up. You know, ultimately, you want to be being aligned with the intention of what people are typing in providing perhaps some kind of offer, a discount, some USP to really stand out and say, hey, click on us, you're looking for this service, we're happy to do 14-day free trial or do free shipping or do, you know, what is the USP inside the business that is make, kind of going to make someone see that ad and say, this is exactly what I want, I'm going to click on this, and, you know, really increases that likelihood of conversion once you're on the page. So for those of us that are not particularly skilled in this area, we could, on the set basis of that, little conversation that we had there, we could easily make errors and miss out on potential customers. Yeah, I mean, it's there's a component of trial and error to this. Regardless if you're a professional and do it day in, day out in terms of setting up Google Ads for people and, you know, a novice starting out in terms of, you know, which keywords have the best return, what kind of ad messaging works the best, there's a trial and error component regardless of how you spin it. But obviously, you know, the, there is a fair amount of expertise that's required to do these things really well out, out of the box. So with the organic, of course, we've just got to tell our story in the best way possible and people engage with that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a few different aspects to how SEO works in terms of getting that ranking performance. And we really try to break it down into three sections. So you can break it down into architecture. The best way to think about architecture is usually all of that techie stuff that happens on the site. Things like, you know, title tags, robots, text files, site maps, and the list goes on. And I won't dive into it too deeply, but all the technical stuff. And then there's the content aspect. And that's what you're talking about in terms of like crafting the right message, using the right words that also are influenced by the keyword strategy in terms of what we want to rank for. Making sure that there's a good amount of copy there. There's no duplication. It's all very you know, good in terms of readability and, you know, draws people into the website and keeps them on the website as much as possible. That has a lot of value. And that's the second bucket. And the third bucket that we look at is the link building aspect of SEO. And that's when your website ultimately gets links from other websites on the internet. And those links act as votes. And, you know, those votes are important in terms of, you know, getting good ranking performance. So it's a fairly complex little area that little thing that we look at on our screen looks so simple <laughs> yeah i mean it is it is i mean seo there's so much that goes into it i mean it's like that with every marketing channel and it's probably like that with most aspects of life you know if you're not experienced with something you might think something simple and usually the simpler it is the more complicated it is behind the simplicity and it's a little bit the same you know someone goes into google and types something in and you know something comes up and you know they're probably not thinking about how that happens or why that happens or why this one's being shown to me and why something else or why something else is being shown to me. But there's a lot that goes into making that happen in terms of the businesses that have good ranking performance. Indeed. I like that you tied that back to life because it's just a mirror really, isn't it? We've managed to put it all together, but all we did was repeat what we've already done. So we've got to make it complex. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, it works. You tie these paid social, Google ads and SEO together, get it right, and all of a sudden a small business is, can be very large. Yeah, I mean, I think where most, you know, if I was to analyse the businesses that we work with that have done tremendously well, 
it's always a combination of these things, right? And understanding the funnel that a user goes through. So it's understanding that top of funnel message, the middle of funnel message, the bottom of funnel message, and where to use the strongest parts of each of these channels. You know, for example, Google Ads and Facebook have very powerful remarketing functions, which mean if someone visits your website or a particular page on your website, you can follow them around with a particular message. Even in the e-commerce space, you can have dynamic remarketing, which basically means if someone looks at a particular product, that exact product will follow them around. It has a lot of value in terms of conversion rate and things like that too. So it's understanding, you know, what's the top of funnel message? And, you know, what's the bottom of funnel message? What's the middle of funnel message? And where does it make sense to bring all these channels in to get the best return on investment? So it doesn't take away from somebody actually having to understand what their business is about. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we're very good at handling the technical aspects of setting these kind of things up, but it's not uncommon for us to step into business situations where we need a lot more from them than they have, you know, in terms of why would someone pick you over your competition? You know, when someone can't answer that with an answer that's satisfactory, it's very hard to market that business. It's like, oh, we have good customer service. It's like, well, everyone says that's good customer service. You know, what can we tangibly latch onto here as what does that look like, good customer service? How can we tangibly kind of build that out? Does that mean that, you know, you do half an hour consultation for free? Is that what you mean by good customer service? And something that you'd come across a lot, I'm sure, is fine tuning these aspects of a business because you need something to market. You need something good to market. You need to have some strength to that message. Absolutely, I do. And the important thing there is to be able to get that message as quickly and succinctly as you possibly can without being glib. Yeah, <laughs> Your people need to be able to recognise that what they're seeing or hearing is real Yeah, and understand immediately that, okay, this is a good place to be. So very important in that area. Where do people generally start with digital market? I mean, there's two routes that most people go down. The first route is to go down the path of a little bit of, you know, do-it-yourself mentality where... If you have the time as a business owner to learn this stuff, and it takes a bit of time and there's a fair bit involved in terms of time requirements to learn it and do it well, that is you know, an invaluable skill to learn. And there's lots of fantastic resources online and blogs out there that you can very quickly find and you know, begin to absorb this kind of information, which is fantastic. So I would say if you have the time to learn and execute on digital marketing, I think it's one of the strongest aspects to business owners' arsenal. The other side of it is, if you are time poor and perhaps not very technically savvy, you might engage an agency to do all of these things on your behalf. And there might be an instance where, look, you know, you're busy running the business, you don't have time to do the marketing, but it's never been a focus, you don't enjoy looking at spreadsheets, then it might be good to engage an agency to kind of walk you through some of these ideas and what could work best for you and things like that. Yes, yeah, so we can do it ourselves, but there's always an opportunity that there's somebody who's somewhat more skilled than we. <laughs> yeah, I think that's always the case with most things, isn't it? Indeed, indeed it is. When somebody's starting out on this journey, is there a particular area they should start? So you've mentioned the SEO, Google Ads and Paid Social. Is there a preferred way? It is a little bit dependent on the business itself in terms of what their strengths and weaknesses are, which throws a little bit of a spanner in the uh, works in terms of giving a clear answer to that question. But, you know, I would say most businesses out there, certainly not all, but most businesses out there would benefit from having a focus on SEO as a channel that might be a good starting point. SEO is an interesting space because it's a very long-term approach to marketing. Whereas the ad side of things, you know, you could literally set up an ad in an afternoon. I mean, you need the collateral to do it and the landing pages and bits and pieces like that, but you can generally set it up very quickly. The SEO is something that takes a lot of time. And that means that often we're finding ourselves in engagements with clients where, you know, we end up having conversations where we say things like, you should have started SEO two years ago. That's what you should have done. Now you're reliant on Google ads and the paid mediums and you're paying hand over fist to support those positions and keep the leads coming through the door. And if you started on SEO two years ago, you would be in a position where you could really scale those areas back and have really strong organic performance, which usually ties through to stronger conversion rates because people, you know, interact with the organic listings a little bit differently to how they normally interact with the ads. So I would say 
if there's a foundation to begin with, and it is very different for a lot of businesses, I'd probably say SEO is usually a good foundation to begin with in terms of starting points. And then looking at some of the ways that Google Ads and Facebook Ads can support the traffic that comes through the website, you'd be looking at things like remarketing would probably be another area to look into out of those three channels. There you go. Now, when somebody starts this journey, yep. is there a typical expectation? The expectations, it's one of the hardest things to have a conversation to the clients about because expectations when it comes to digital marketing are a little bit all over the place. And the expectations are, are very, very different for every single brand based on what they're currently at. You know, sometimes we'll take on brands that have a lot of strength in terms of SEO and we make a few fine tune, do a little bit of fine tuning and things perform much, much better very quickly. Other times when you're starting a website from scratch, you don't have any links built to it. The content was usually kind of put together in such a way where it needs a little bit of rework from an SEO perspective. You know, it might have been done quickly without too much focus on SEO to begin with. So the architecture needs work. So, you know, the expectations are very, very challenging to kind of portray. But what I would say is, you know, if you're working in the, let's say, the digital marketing space, you should be really seeing light at the end of the tunnel at the three month mark. If you're working with an agency or you're putting a lot of time and energy into digital marketing, you should have some good wins on the board at the three month mark in terms of perhaps ranking better for particular keywords that you had your eye on, probably not ranking very, very well quite yet in terms of three months, but enough data from the organic search side of things to be able to say, okay, this is a good path. If I keep going down this path, I've seen enough to know good things are going to happen because I've seen some ranking improvements, a little bit of traffic improvement, a few bits and pieces. And similarly with the ads, you know, you can see the data very quickly, but it will take a little bit of time to iron out some of the inefficiencies in the campaigns that are running to get the messaging right, to find the right keywords, to get the right audiences in terms of paid social. So I'd probably say, you know, if you're going to do it yourself or you're going to engage an agency to do it, you know, having a bit of a stern review at the three month mark to say, how has this gone? And if you're not seeing some light at the end of the tunnel and some wins on the board at that mark, you probably need to change up what you're doing. Indeed. So there's lots of monitoring that goes on. So the accurate interpretation of that monitoring would be fairly important. Yeah. I mean, everyone that has a website should be using Google Analytics. It's a fantastic free tool. It gives you a lot of insights and information. Setting up the goal aspects of that tool so you can see, for example, you know, if someone comes onto your website and fills out a contact form, where that's coming from. Is it coming from organic? Is it coming from direct? Is it coming from a referral source? All of that kind of stuff is in very, very useful. And it's probably the, one of the first steps in understanding how you're actually, you know, you need to be able to measure the performance of what you're actually doing. So you need to set that up basically the first step to be able to monitor how things are going. The monitoring, I think, is exceptionally important because that allows you to make decisions on how you go forward. As you said, you want a serious review at three months to check, okay, what have we done? What have we achieved? What do we need to change? Is that how it works for you? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, making sure that the tracking setup is is mission critical and making sure that, you know, you're building yourself a fast feedback loop to be able to make changes and quickly determine, have they been positive? Have they been negative? What do we do next? And the faster you can do that loop, the better. Like the internet, speed is all important. Yes, it absolutely is. And page speed is actually very important for organic search and paid advertising online as well. So it's interesting you mentioned that. <laughs> Tell us more about this speed. <laughs> I mean, there's a massive correlation between page speed and conversion rate for starters. So if you click onto a website and it loads instantly compared to a website that you click on and it takes 10 seconds to load, for example, there is a massive, massive difference between like the conversion rate you'll see on a fast page compared to a slow page. I mean, a lot of people won't even wait for the time that it takes the website to load. They'll just click off, particularly if they're on a mobile device and they're in an environment that they're doing things quite fast paced. You know, they're on the train home, but perhaps they're looking for an insurance broker to help them out with something. You know, they're quickly scrolling through. They click on something and it's, you know, two seconds goes by, four seconds goes by and it hasn't loaded. They're clicking X and going to the next one on the list. So page speed is very important from a conversion perspective, but it's also very important from core ranking perspective from an SEO and when looking at the SEO ranking factors. So it's something that Google openly talks about being a ranking factor in terms of how their algorithm works. 
And it's obvious why. They want their users to have the best experience. They're going to preference sites that are fast over sites that are slow. It's that simple. And you mentioned algorithm there. Uh, I hear constant chatter about somebody changed the algorithm. Yeah. Somebody's upset my work because they changed the algorithm. (laughs) (laughs) What should we worry about in terms of somebody changing an algorithm? Well, Google changed their algorithms for search rankings a lot. So, you know, from a business perspective and from a business owner's perspective, worrying about the algorithm changes as they're happening, like an SEO firm does, it's far too intense and you probably don't need to get down to that level of things. But, you know, what they were telling people to do 10 years ago is very similar to what they're telling people to do today, you know, and people find these angles to rank faster in a non-sustainable way and you have to be very careful of that. But the reality is, you know, if you're creating something that values the user, so it's high quality content, as a result of that high quality content, you're earning really good links out there on the internet, you know, you're constantly mindful of, you know, making sure that the website's very user friendly, it loads quickly, things like that. Even on that kind of top line, that's really what Google wants to see. What they don't want to see and what they actively go after is people trying to push the envelope a little too far in terms of, you know, getting a very large number of low quality paid for backlinks, for example. They're the kind of things that Google is cracking down on. People, you know, duplicating content from other sources, copying and pasting content around the internet as opposed to creating something unique and valuable for their clientele themselves. It's all of these kind of historical things that just lead to that kind of low quality perception and then cause problems in the short term and long term when it comes to ranking performance. What I would be concerned about as a business owner is making sure that, you know, your intention is a good one. Your intention is to create something great, to put out good content, to earn good backlinks. And that's generally, you know, without people even knowing it, that's probably what they're doing. Indeed. And as you explained that, I realized that Google was saying those very things 10 years ago. They were saying that if you're real, you're fine. If you're trying to push the envelope too far, yeah, we're watching. Yeah. <laughs> this has been absolutely great because you've introduced me to some more simple explanations about what on the face of it seems a very complex issue and confusing for many. But the important thing about business conversations, what is the best tip, David, that you have received from a business conversation? I would say... You know, I was catching up with one of my mentors probably late last year and the conversation could be distilled to the simple message of get out of your own way. And I'm someone that really wants to, you know, have my hand everywhere and do all of this work and kind of almost control things a little bit too much. And I think, you know, you get into business and you get into business because you're very good at delivering that service. You know, you're the technician inside the business. And this is a very typical situation for me. And then you kind of learn the the sales aspects and the operations aspects of the business and you begin to employ people and and your role and and things like that start to change. And you have to be able to realize that the business is only going to grow as much as you are personally able to grow. And that is the limit. You as a business owner is the limit in terms of where you're going to go. And sometimes you have to be willing to, you know, take your hands off something and say, this is... Now someone, you know, I've employed someone to do this job and I trust that they're capable of doing it. And that's an interesting journey to go on as a business owner. And I'm sure it's something that you've seen many, many times in your life. So I would say get out of your own way. Sometimes you are what is stopping your success. And that's something I keep in mind after hearing it. And I think it's very good advice to a lot of people out there. I agree. Absolutely. Excellent advice. <laughs> Every now and again, just have a look. Am I the problem? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. Am I slowing things down? Usually the answer when I think about it is yes, it's me. I need to do something here. <laughs> oh, dear. The wonder of ego. Yeah. <laughs> what is the top piece of advice you'd like to leave listeners with today, David? I think I have the pleasure of working on a lot of businesses to help with their marketing. And I have a lot of friends that have started businesses and I've been in the business world in, you know, this kind of capacity for a long time. And I think marketing is something that is usually undervalued. And I would say to people out there, you know, there's a great book and you might have read it yourself called e by Michael Gerber. Fantastic book. And he talks about, you know, that a business really has three legs like a stool. Obviously, the leg 
like the technical deliverable aspect of the business. So providing the actual service that your business supplies. And then the other two legs of the stool is marketing and sales. And I think a lot of people go into business, you know, they think all they need to do to start a business is have the skill of what the business does, but that is actually not correct at all. You have to be able to market what you are selling and you have to be able to sell what you're marketing. So it's one of these situations where I would tell people to put marketing high on the list of priorities. You know, obviously you're starting the business because you can do the technical aspects of what the business sells. That's the easiest part for you as a business owner, going out and starting a business. And it would be worrying if that wasn't the case. So that's generally how it works. But then most people fall over at the marketing sales aspects of the business. And that's probably where a lot of focus needs to go. So I just say, you know, prioritize it perhaps more than you may think it's required. And, you know, some people I've seen have a bit of an aversion to marketing and sales and they think it's a bit of a dirty word and it's not something that they prioritize in business. But at the end of the day, you know, to get in front of the right people and to deliver that service that you know how to deliver, you know, probably better than most people. That's why to get yourself in front of those people to do a good job, you need a market, you need an understanding of how the sales process works and how to do it. Indeed, you can be absolutely excellent at doing whatever it is you do, but if you don't have anyone to do it for, it doesn't help a lot, does it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but before we let you get away, David, most importantly, how can our listeners connect with you to start their own business conversation? Well, the best place to get a hold of me would be through the website, which is sixgun.com.au. You can also find me on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on all of the places where you'd expect. But probably the best way is jump on the website, have a little bit of a look around, and if you want to reach out from there, feel free. And that's sixgun.com.au, which, of course, prompts the question, why six gun? <laughs> well, one of the things that is a little bit interesting about the space that I'm in, the digital marketing space, and usually I have to lead with this intro when I talk about the name, is that most agencies out there have interesting, quirky, sharp names. So most of the people that we're dealing with, they're already quite familiar with all of the other interesting marketing agency names out there. And it never really becomes a question at all. It just kind of fits into the ecosystem that we're in. So to someone that isn't in the marketing world, they might think, wow, that's kind of an odd, pretty odd name. But compared to what, you know, our competitors' names, it fits right in. <laughs> so that's probably the first thing to understand in terms of like, you know, we're actually pretty, you know, as a marketing agency, it's pretty normal to have an out there name. <laughs> I picked the name for a number of reasons. You know, I like it because it's short and sharp. I like it because, you know, we're a technically driven agency that delivers a bit of that marketing firepower. You know, we do it in a bit of a no BS way where we, you know, tell people how it is. You know, we set the expectations as they need to be set. And we're the first people to tell someone that we're not right for you or you need to be doing this first before you even have a conversation with us and things like that. So there's a few aspects to the name that drew me in. And there's some of them, yeah. That's it. I like it a lot. Six gun. <laughs> Yeah, well, hopefully you don't forget it. I mean, that's the other Suggestion thing. We're going to get into it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. In the trenches. <laughs> David, this has been a great conversation and you've provided a good deal of clarity around all this stuff, which to some of us can be a little bit confusing. So thank you for that. And I think we look forward to having you back on another day. Thank you for this business conversation. Clive, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. Bye now. Thanks for listening to another episode of Business Conversations with Clive Enever. Make sure you subscribe to future episodes via your favourite podcast app and you can find more business resources at cliveenever.com.au.